Next is uh, cell structure, the cell membrane and organelle. Let's look at the learning outcome. Show the detailed structures of typical plant and animal cell and state the organelle present. We are going to explain more details about the organelles. Explain the structure and functions, uh, and then go to the functions of each organelle. Then we are going to discuss about plasma membrane along with the structure and functions of each component. Okay, now let's begin. Typical structure of, a, of an animal cell. Alright, maaf mengganggu eh. Okay, typical structure, let's look at the, uh, okay, ni, this is the structure of a cheek cell eh. Cheek cell maksudnya pipi dalam mulut kita ni. Um, observe under light microscope. So, nampak tak betul tak saya kata? Kita hanya nampak bentuk dia, cell membrane. Then we have the nucleus. We don't, we cannot see the, the nucleus. Okay, unless we, we increase the magnification power eh. Ini 400 kali. Maksudnya apa? Kita gunakan objektif lens war, um, yang mana satu? Oil emission ni. Tak, oil emission akan jadi seribu. Ini 400 kali maknanya kita guna ocular lens 10. Objektif lens 40 kali. Okay. Jadi ni tak gunakan oil emission pun. Typical structure of plant cell, cause, jadi bawah mikroskop pun sebenarnya kita tak nampak dua garisan yang terlalu jauh. Kita hanya nampak dia satu garisan yang tebal eh, nanti saya tunjuk. Kuat ni. Uh, this is an epidermis of onion, onion epidermis tissue. Okay, macam apa saya buat ni? So, kalau kena lukis. Okay, let me draw this one. Uh, where is the central vacuole? Mm. This is the this is the nucleus, eh? Nucleus. No, no, no. That one is not. Tak nampak nucleus. Tak ada. So, lukis yang lain. Okay, this one, eh? This is the nucleus. So kat sini tak nampak sangat kat mana dia punya uh, vakuol. Tak nampak. We can compare between cell, animal cell and plant cell. Okay. Bila comparison, ingat eh. Akan sentiasa saya ulang. Comparison must have similarities and differences. And then dalam soalan, dalam soalan Uh, Pixel final nanti tak boleh Tak boleh jawab dalam bentuk Table macam ni, ni adalah untuk nota uh, Okay, pelajar selalu kata, Habis yang Madam tunjuk tu Eh that is one is lecture note Bukannya, bukannya Jawapan soalan kan Similarity, both are eukaryotic cells, both contain membrane-bound organelles, undergo Mitosis and meiosis For cell division and the nuclear materials uh, DNA. While the differences is plant cell has fixed or rigid shape. Okay, yang ni dah tak payah saya ulang lah kan. Apa yang pleknya ni eh? Flagella. Plant cell does not have flagella. Kena ingat tu. And cilia is also absent. Uh, except in more primitive plants. More primitive ni mungkin yang sel-sel yang sangat simple macam Al, eh, alga bukan tumbuhan eh. Uh, alga like ke, yang dalam air ke, very simple, very primitive. Uh, it, a plant cell have large central vacuole while animal cell, uh, either their vacuole is too small or they don't have vacuole at all. Then the storage, uh, the carbo, the storage, food storage is in the form of starch while in animal, Uh, the storage is in form of glycogen. Sekarang kita masuk kepada organel. Uh, jadi saya nak panggil seorang-seorang lah. 
untuk nucleus. Nucleus um, is spherical, considered as the largest organelle. Eh? Largest organelle. The nuclear envelope enclose the nucleus and the nuclear envelope is double membrane. Jadi kena ingatlah ni, yang double membrane yang mana satu ada tiga saja. Eh. Uh, ini saya tak nak tengok pergi kepada function. Dalam nucleus, there are more dense area, dense area, a region which is denser in the nucleus called nucleolus. So what is uh, the function of nucleolus? The site of rRNA synthesis. rRNA ni equal, uh, is, is ribosome kan? Ha. Ay, ayam ni masa ni lah nak berkokok. rRNA is a ribosome. So where are ribosome is produced? In the nucleus. So this is the nuclear pore. Eh? Nuclear pore. Jadi selepas uh, ribosom terhasil dia akan keluar ikut nuclear pore. Functions of nucleus is to carry genetic material and control center of activity in cell. Okay, dia bukan uh, pergerakan sel tetapi activity cell. Okay, kita betulkan perkataan tu saja. The control center of cell activity. Nucleus, nucleolus is the site for ribosome production and initiate protein synthesis by producing mRNA. Initiate eh, the initiate. Endoplasmic reticulum includes rough and smooth endoplasmic. They are single membrane-bound organelle, eh? single. Endoplasmic reticulum are usually um, directly, uh, the RER, eh? the RER are usually continuation of the nuclear membrane ataupun kita boleh kata dia memang directly attached to the nuclear membrane. Eh? Dia punya struktur dia, awak kena ingat perkataan cisterna, okay, flatten sex sebab dia flatten. Kalau kita lukis secara 2D, kita akan lukis dia ini. flatten eh. Ini adalah nukleus. Continuous with outer membrane of nucleus. Okay, outer membrane. Maknanya nukleus ni kan ada dua membrane. And then ribosomes are attached to outer surface of its membrane ni, ribosome. Ni dalam ni ruang ni dipanggil ruang cisterna. Cisterna ke? Awak nak panggil cisterna sebab nak ingat dia punya ejaan pun boleh. The rough ER function intracellular transport. Intra means... Uh, in between the cells itself. Bukannya antara sel dengan sel lain tetapi di dalam, dalaman sel itu sendiri. Abundant in cells which are rapidly growing or cells that can secrete, that need to secrete something such as uh, hydrolytic enzyme, such as um, apa lagi, uh, hormones, okay. The polypeptide chains synthesized by ribosome are modified to glycoprotein and transported from the ER. So glycoprotein is the combination of glyco, which is the carbohydrate, and protein. Eh? So campur, jadi kita panggil glycoprotein. Smooth ER is a tubule, tubular, lebih lebih uh, berbentuk silinder. Kalau kita nampak perbezaan, tengok gambar pun nampak perbezaan. Ini flattened sac. RER flatten but the smooth ER is more tubular. They are lack of, uh, they lack of ribosome. Tak ada ribosome. Lack of maksudnya tak ada. Not present. And the function of smooth ER to, uh, is involved in lipid synthesis. Side of lipid synthesis such as triglycerides, steroid hormones. Example of cells that produce um, this kind of substance uh, such as testis and ovaries. Yeah, ingat eh, steroid hormone. Uh, ni uh, testosterone, progesterone. Ataupun estrogen. Uh, uh, estrogen pun sama. Jadi um, banyak smooth endoplasmic reticulum akan jumpa banyak dalam sel-sel yang seperti ini. 
Then involved in metabolism of carbohydrates in liver cells, of course. Uh, they are abundant in liver cells also. Contain an embedded enzyme that catalyzes the final step in the conversion of glycogen to glucose. Glycogenolysis, eh? The function is to detoxify drugs and poisons in liver cells. Jadi, memang kita akan banyak jumpa lah smooth endoplasmic dalam sel hati. Liver cell sebab kita dah tahu liver ni, fungsi dia ialah detoxification. The modif uh, modify into sarcoplasmic reticulum, sarco, kalau sebut sarco, it's about muscle eh. Jadi ada dalam otot kita juga. To store calcium ion. Sebab otot ni pergerakan dia perlukan, nak bergerak, nak mengecut, mengendur, perlukan, perlukan calcium ion. Uh, jadi, smooth endoplasmic reticulum is abundant in the skeletal muscle. Golgi body. So, Golgi body, um, dia ada cis face dan juga trans face. Cis face, uh, receiving. Receiving maksudnya it receive the protein from the uh, rough ER tadi. Jadi, cis face akan menghadap kepada nukleus. Okay, menghadap kepada nukleus. Yang trans phase is the transport side of the Golgi. So it transport the modified or package uh, protein out of the Golgi body. Maksudnya nak keluar daripada sel pun, uh, dia nak dia dekat lebih dekat dengan sel membrane. Sebab dia nak transport out. So kalau dia dah hasilkan hormon, dia akan rembeskan lah, secret keluar. Golgi body also flatten membrane sac. Uh, call cisterna juga hmm. Each has internal space Lumen eh, dia, dia tak bersambung Dia stack, dia macam uh, Pancake saja eh Stack of pancake Kemudian Golgi body Ni saya dah terangkan Which is face uh, facing nucleus Trans face facing plasma membrane Ataupun closer to plasma membrane So now the the function It uh, Golgi body receive Modify, sort and transport. Ini empat ni kena ada. Receive protein from ER. Protein or carbohydrate or lipid. Okay, the cheese face receive the substance from ER. And then the, the substance will be modified, process. And then uh, it will be transported by the trans phase eh, package in a vesicle and will be transported out of Golgi body. Sorting of the transport vesicle. Jadi sorting ni dia, dia akan bentuk vesicle tu sama ada jadi um, vesicle yang ada hydrolytic enzyme ataupun vesicle yang akan keluar, dia, dia nak rembeskan keluar daripada sel. Sebab uh, dalam sel ni kadang contohnya sel makrofaj kita kan, sel darah putih kita, dia engulf the bacteria. So they need to digest the bacteria. So the digestion needs enzyme. So the enzyme comes from these, uh, these organelles. Eh? Modify, package and sorting of substances. Golgi body form lysosome. Okay, any one type of a vesicle produced by Golgi body. So lysosome, in plant cell, Golgi body secretes polysaccharide and form cell plate. Jadi lysosome dalam tumbuhan, sel tumbuhan, dia akan uh, membentuk sel wall yang baru. Nanti kita akan belajar dalam um, dalam cell division lah. Okay. So lysosome ni fuse, dia akan membentuk, kemudian bila ada deposit of cellulose, dia akan membentuk sel wall yang uh, baru. Okay. Eh. Lysosome is a spherical sac, bentuk bulat, has single membrane. Contain hydrolytic enzyme that can digest macromolecule. Example of macromolecule is ribonuclease, enzyme yang akan mencerna ke RNA. Uh, RNA, eh? Deoxyribonuclease, uh, DNA, ataupun protease, enzyme, lipase, lipid. Ini semua enzim yang melibat, yang akan digest, eh, yang, yang akan bertindak ke atas substance dia tersebut.
Ni ada uh, ni contoh digestive eh digestive activity involved with the lysosome. Uh, lysosome contain digestive enzyme here. Then uh, phagocytosis occurs. Phagocytosis I will discuss it in 2.4. Okay, and then form food vacuole. The food vacuole fuse with the lysosome. And the lysosome release the hydrolytic enzyme. Then the food will be digested and the substance will be absorbed by the cells. Lysosome is important for intracellular digestion. Dia ada beberapa. Pertama, intracellular digestion. For example, our own red blood cell lah. Uh, sorry, white blood cell yang saya cerita dengan tadi. Ataupun ameba. Ameba dengan white blood cell, dia punya um, konsep dia, dia punya cara living dia lebih kurang sama. Cuma ameba ni duduk di luar persekitaran luar. Manakala white blood cell kita dalam badan kita. Kedua, autophagy. Autophagy adalah digestion of damaged organelles. To recycle the, 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 the materials of the Uh, organelles. Contohnya bakteria, eh, sorry, sorry, dalam badan sel, dalam sel kita contohnya uh, worn out mitochondria. Dia dah penat masihkan tenaga kemudian dia dah rosak. So worn out, it, it cannot be um, just, it cannot just stay in the cell. It needs to be removed. Tapi dia tak boleh keluarkan, uh, keluarkan mitochondria macam keluarkan, macam kita keluar luahkan makan tu kan? Tak boleh. So how do they do it? They will digest the mitochondria. So all the substance such as the lipid, the carbo uh, on the mitochondria can be used by the cell itself. Uh, ni contoh phagocytosis eh. Ni phagocytosis yang saya cakap tadi. Ni autophagy. Another function of lysosome involved in autolysis. The cell uh, cell destruction, destructive program. Merosakkan diri sendiri. Ha, eh, kita ada, kita dalam badan kita memang ada, um, memang ada masanya sel kita akan bunuh diri sendiri. Uh, untuk memberi laluan kepada sel yang baru. Uh, okay. Uh, cell destructive program. Contoh paling senang kita nak tengok kegunaan uh, autolysis ni adalah dalam Um, metamorphosis of frogs daripada level berudu tadpole to uh, when they when it develop into uh, an adult frog kan ada ekor ada ekor kat sini right ekor ni mana perginya yang hilang so sel-sel ni perlu dimusnahkan sama juga dengan kita dalam masa kita masa kita dalam kandungan uh, masa kita nak terbentuk tangan kita ni semua ni belum lagi ada detail uh, ter, bukan terpisah tak terpisah lagi eh tak terpisah jadi autolysis ni akan pisahkan kita punya jari-jari ni kemudian kita akan terpisah dan kemudian kita akan ada struktur tangan yang sempurna eh right the endometrium ya yeah, saya kalau yang cicak tu pun kan, kalau dia putus uh, ekor, itu pun kira autolysis ke? Putus ekor tu bukan autolysis tu memang mekanisme dia menyelamatkan diri memang anggota dia tercabut. Uh, kemudian sel dia regenerate. Oh, oh okey okey. Uh, tu sel dia regenerate. Uh, tu bukan. Autolysis uh, ni macam, uh, itulah ni macam saya cerita tadi lah macam katak tadi. Sama juga kita, um, ah, tu lah, yang paling uh, yang paling jelas nampak kita punya fungsi autolysis dalam badan kita tu lah yang separate our fingers eh. Kalau tidak kita akan ada web hand, web webbed hand. Macam itik tu kan. Oh, okay. Thank Alright. you. Sama. The endomembrane system um, include nuclear envelope. Maknanya ni ada, dia adalah relation. They are interrelated. From starting with nuclear envelope dengan endoplasmic reticulum then goes to Golgi apparatus, lysosome, plasma membrane and various vesicles and vesicles. It regulates protein traffic and perform metabolic functions in the cell. Tu maksud endomembrane system. Eh? 
mem different membranes of the eukaryotic cells uh, that works together to form a system. The nuclear envelope is connected to the rough ER and continuous with the smooth ER. Membranes and protein produced by the ER move via transport vesicle to the Golgi body. Any vesicle tadi kan ada dalam endomembrane system to the Golgi body. So uh, the communication between the rough ER and the Golgi body is by means of vesicles. Then the Golgi body pinches off the transport vesicles and give rise to lysosome or other types of specified vesicles such as food vesicles okay and this is like also food vesicles or, or any transport vesicle that will secrete the substance outside of the cell the lysosome available for fusion with another vesicle for digestion okay lysosome for digestion a transport vesicle carries proteins to the plasma membrane for secretion Okay. The plasma membrane expands by fusion of vesicles and secrete proteins from the cell. Okay, you can read the uh, statement here. And the membrane system respons responsible for processing, sorting, packaging, um, membrane material, protein, and large water soluble molecules such as carbohydrate, uh, lipid, and all, and, uh, and and everything that we have learned. Eh? Next is ribosome. The ribosome is the organelles. We include ribosome into the list of organelles but ribosome does not have membrane because it is made up of RNA uh, and proteins eh? RNA and protein jadi gabungan protein dengan RNA secara umum kita boleh panggil nucleoprotein ingat kan RNA ada yang kita belajar RNA yang kita belajar R RNA mRNA dengan tRNA. Sebenarnya ada lagi RNA lain awak boleh carilah saya tak ajar kat sini eh. Composed of two subunits, large and small subunit. Ha ni memang macam ni lah rupa dia. There are two types of ribosome, the bound ribosome which uh, can be found bounded on the on the apa kita tadi? rough endoplasmic reticulum. Dan satu lagi, free ribosome. Free ribosome, dia scattered in the cytoplasm. Eh, duduk dalam cytoplasma lah walaupun dia dihasilkan di dalam nucleolus. Tetapi dia akan dibawa keluar daripada nucleus ke cytoplasma. So the function of ribosome, either bounded or free, they are the site for protein synthesis. Mesti ada perkataan site eh. Site for protein synthesis. Tak boleh jawab ribosom fungsi ribosom sebagai protein sintesis sahaja sebab sebenarnya banyak banyak uh, molekul ataupun organel yang terlibat dengan protein sintesis such as uh, the nucleus itself because it start with the nucleus and then goes to the uh, cytoplasm jadi um, kita katakan dia nak hasilkan polypeptide tu uh, yang apa ni ribosom is site for protein sintesis. Okey, untuk peringkat uh, pembentukan polypeptide tu memang ribosom yang terlibat secara langsung untuk menterjemahkan apa yang kita copy daripada DNA kita. So, kalau free ribosom, site for intracellular protein sintesis. Maknanya protein yang dihasilkan untuk sel. Manakala bound ribosom Uh, especially for extracellular protein synthesis meaning uh, the, uh, the protein that produced from the RER is specifically to be transported out of the cell mitochondrion uh, kalau plural mitochondria eh tu beza dia uh, jadi tak ada salah pun nak sebut mitochondrion atau mitochondria uh, tak ada masalah kecuali kalau ditunjuk dua gambar Dua gambar mitokondria, awak uh, buat jawablah mitokondria. Uh, okay. Tadi tapi setakat ni insyaAllah tak ada apa-apa masalah pun kalau jawab mitokondria ataupun mitokondria. Ada dua, uh, mitokondria ada dua membrane. Outer membrane, inner membrane. Dan inner membrane folded 
inward masuk maknanya berlipat ke dalam and the parts where it is folded is called crease tay okey crease tay nah ni crease tay kenapa folded ni apa kepentingan folded ni siapa tahu a uh, lo Uh, increase jalinan luas permukaan uh, luas permukaan tu ah good increase surface area jadi lebih banyak lebih banyak site untuk uh, energy production eh uh, energy production kita awak akan belajar nanti dalam cellular respiration stock particles iaitu enzyme ATP synthase enzyme yang menghasilkan ATP are studded patan dia saya guna studded maknanya ataupun embedded on surface of cristae. Uh, kemudian antara dua uh, antara dua ni antara inner membrane dengan outer membrane memang ada ruang. Ruang ni kita panggil intermembrane space. Intermembrane space. And then dia ada matrix. Matrix ni adalah uh, bahagian yang jelly like ni macam kalau sel kalau biasa sel kita kita panggil cytoplasm. Ha ni sebab dia dalam mitokondria tak boleh panggil cytoplasm juga dipanggil matrix of mitochondria. So dalam matrix ni ada enzim, ada DNA, RNA, ribosom. Okay. Uh, mitochondria ni dia ada DNA dia sendiri. Nah, sebab tu dia boleh identify dia organel ni uh, dah worn out nak mati ke apa ke kan. Uh, right tu mitochondria eh. The function is site for cellular respiration. Jangan tinggal perkataan site. The matrix of mitochondria ini untuk ini penerangan saja. Jadi awak belum belajar lagi Krebs cycle. Nanti awak akan jumpa dalam cellular respiration um, Krebs cycle that, that berlaku kat matrix of mitochondria. Manakala inner mitochondrial membrane ataupun krista uh, dia adalah site for electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. Jadi next is chloroplast. Chloroplast biasa je um, kalau lukisan 2D saya suka lukis dia begini. Dia macam um, by concave shape kan. Concave, concave shape. Kemudian lukis dua menunjukkan bahawa dia double membrane. Lepas tu um, fluid field space yang dipanggil stroma. Where we can find starch granules. And then it has tilakoid, this like sex, okay. Uh, tilakoid ni uh, macam pancake yang stack, stack okay. stack of pancake. Hmm. Tilakoid and a stack of pan, uh, pancake, kan? ada sasul. A stack of tilakoid is called granum. Kemudian okay, dia ada sambungan a bridge dipanggil um, integrana lamella eh integrana lamella ni lamella integrana bahasa Melayu dia ni lamella eh alright so we have two grana one is granum two we have uh, kalau dua plural kita panggil dia grana sebab tu jangan Terkejutlah kalau jumpa ada kejap ada tulis grana, kejap tulis granum. Uh, it's matter it's matter of the apa, amount of the uh, plural or singular. Tilakot ni sendiri adalah ada ruang eh. Dalam ruang, dalam tilakot ni sendiri ada ruang. Uh, sebab tu uh, kalau kita lebih spesifik, uh, fotosintesis kan ada dua. Light dependent dengan light independent. Yang light dependent berlaku dekat Tilakoid membrane. Manakala light independent berlaku dalam pada stroma eh. Stroma. Ada soalan nak tanya? Tak ada? Tilakoid membrane contains photosynthetic pigment. Baru saya sebut tadi. And stroma contain enzyme. Ha, ni light dependent reaction. Ni light independent reaction. So chloroplast can be found in on the uh, leaf of plants dekat dekat pokok dekat daun uh, sometimes ada juga dekat sekeliling dekat dia punya apa ni uh, batang batang pokok yang muda so, 
chloroplast is a site for photosynthesis where light dependent reaction occurs, uh, light dependent and light independent reaction occurs. Chloroplast also function to store starch, eh? store starch. Uh, it's about the centriole. Centriole ni kalau kita nak ingat dia banyak banyak terlibat masa kita explain cell division. Jadi uh, central is in an in animal cells dia ada centrosome which has a pair of centriole. Okay. Each composed of nine sets of triplets of microtubules arranged in a ring form. Dia almost macam, almost similar to flagellum. Tetapi flagellum uh, untuk eukaryot, line plus two. Tapi bagi centriol ni, uh, dia nine, satu, dua, satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima, enam, tujuh, lapan, sembilan. Uh, ni tak ada. Uh, dia nine plus zero. Okay. Arrange in a ring form. Assist macrotubule arrangement forming spindle fiber. Jadi perkataan dia assist. Assist. Dia membantu. Bukan dia yang central ni bukan dia yang hasilkan microtubule tu. Bukan dia yang hasilkan spindle fiber tu. Spindle fiber is produced by the microtubule. Uh, sorry. Uh, Okay, uh, ni, right. Assist microtubule arrangement forming spindle fibers in the cell division. Sebab tu dalam tumbuhan, di centrosome dia tidak ada, tidak ada centriol. Tetapi masih boleh menghasilkan spindle fiber. Um, form basal body in formation of cilia and flagella okay, in moving cell. Jadi, Asas kepada pembentukan flagella dengan silia ni adalah susunan centriol. Ni yeah, basal body. Ni ni tepi ni. Could mitochondria and chloroplast classify into endomembrane system? System. What do you think? Are they included or not? I think yes. Why? Because mitochondrion, dia ada membran luar, membran dalam. Sure. Okay, kita tengok balik endomembran sistem tadi. Okay. Regulate protein traffic. Endomembran system is to regulate protein traffic and perform metabolic functions in the cell. So in which way, in, part, in which part that the mitochondria and the chloroplast are involved in the protein traffic regulation? Oh. Tak ada kan? Dia tak terlibat dengan penghasilan protein ataupun penghantaran atau packaging tak ada. So they are not classified in the endomembrane system. Sekarang kita masuk kepada plasma membrane. Jadi um, Pertama, kita kena, uh, we need to describe plasma membrane based on fluid mosaic model. Ini kita akan gunakan fluid mosaic model. Okay, kenapa fluid, kenapa mosaic, kita kena faham. Nah, tu yang kita kena terangkan. Then, uh, plasma membrane, the main component of plasma membrane are lipids and protein. Mesti ada dua-dua. Tak boleh lipid sahaja, tak boleh protein sahaja. Mesti ada dua-dua eh. The basic structure is the phospholipid and then proteins are embedded in the phospholipid. The, uh, the proteins are either fully embedded or partially embedded or just attached to the phospholipid by layer. Okay. Ini struktur uh, common yang kita boleh lukis atau kita jumpa kalau kita tengok gambar rajah sepatutnya kita tahu. Composed of phospholipid by layer. Jadi nak lukis phospholipid by layer mesti ada kepala kaki. Okay. Ini um, kepalanya adalah hydro. Apa? Filik or phobic? Filik. 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 Okay. The tail. Ini kita panggil tail eh. Tail is hydrophobic. Alright. Good. Kemudian uh, komponen kedua yang penting adalah protein. Yeah, protein. Saya nak colour lah okay, protein ni. 
Cuba kita tengok protein ni ada ni terbenam penuh. Ni ada yang attach sahaja. Kemudian ada yang ha, dekat dalam gambar ni tak ada. Dia ada satu protein yang akan terbenam separuh sahaja. Right? Dia sama ada dia terbenam separuh atau terbenam penuh kita panggil dia intrinsic protein eh. Intrinsic protein. Manakala protein yang hanya uh, attach to the surface sama ada mungkin dia attach, de uh, attach dekat luar bagai luar fosfolipid atau kat sini ke uh, ia tetap dipanggil sebagai uh, peripheral protein ataupun extrinsic. Hmm. As, uh, selalu awak kan selalu kena biasakan istilah X istilah uh, in ni luar eh, out ni maksudnya in this is the cytoplasm walaupun dia duduk dalam cytoplasm dalam sel tetapi dia extrinsic sebab dia di luar struktur plasma membrane eh. Right. Glycolipid is the uh, structure uh, combine, combine combination of carbohydrate. Ni this is the carbohydrate. Kalau dia tunjuk sini saja ni carbohydrate. Ini adalah lipid. Jadi dia adalah glycolipid. While this is glycoprotein. So uh, wait, where where is the protein? This is the protein. And this is the carbohydrate eh. Uh, so the combination of carbohydrate and protein is called glycoprotein. Right. Nampak tak dia tunjuk ni? Kalau ini sahaja, ini adalah chain of carbohydrate. Okay, boleh faham? Ini secara di, uh, secara figuratively ataupun secara diagram eh. Secara diagram. The carbohydrate chain attached to protein. Ini dah saya dah terangkan tadi. Right now. We have to describe the plasma membrane based on fluid mosaic model. Okay, why they are, why they, why the Jack and Nicholson ni, dia guna perkataan fluid dengan mosaic ni. Kenapa fluid? Because uh, fluid and mosaic is two different, has two different characterization. Satu fluid, satu mosaic. Mosaic macam, uh, apa tu nama? Lantai kita kan, eh? lantai mosaic tu. Uh, bukannya mosaic sekolah SBP tu. Fluid kenapa? Because fluid macam air, air kan able to move. Able to move, boleh bergerak. Jadi yang ni kita kena mention phospholipids and protein. Both. The phospholipid and the protein able to move laterally. Maksudnya kalau kita, uh, biasa tak awak march ataupun berapa? Orang kata apa? March bahasa Melayu apa? Berkawat. Ah berkawat. Semut berkawat satu-satu tu kan. Kalau berkawat tu bergerak ke depan. Sekarang ni bergerak uh, pusing kanan. Okay bergerak tiga langkah ke kanan. So lateral move lah tu. Tu maksud dia. Side by side kan. Eh? Jadi dia bergerak ke kanan. Bergerak ke kiri. That is why uh, Jack and Nicholson dia gunakan istilah fluid. Okay, kalau soalan kenapa fluid? Uh, the answer is because phospholipid and protein able to move laterally ataupun move side by side. Boleh? Tak ada masalah. So the lateral movement of phospholipid within the membrane is rapid. Cepat lah, dia cepat. And then protein are much larger and slower. And why uh, mosaic? Kenapa mosaic pula? Tadi dah lipid, kenapa mosaic pula? So mosaic because the arrangement of the protein. The protein are embedded in the phospholipid and uh, produce um, produce a pattern eh. They produce pattern. Ada satu corak. Corak macam simen uh, mosaic yang terbenam dalam simen. So mosaic because arrangement of different proteins embedded or attached to the phospholipid by layer. Embedded or attached to the phospholipid by layer. Jadi kalau kita tengok daripada atas, ni kalau kita tengok daripada atas, kita tu kita akan nampak uh, corak lah. Ha, ni protein embedded dalam macam embedded dalam simen kan. Okay, component of the plasma membrane we, we have to describe the phospholipid has hydrophilic head and hydrophobic 
detail. So they are called amphipathic. Amphipathic, yeah? amphipathic because they have the both hydrophobic and hydrophilic region. Amphipathic. Jadi macam tadi. Ni hydrophilic. This one tail is the hydrophobic. So the hydrophilic head will continue, uh, sorry, the hydrophilic head will be facing outside of the cell, the water. Sebab dia hydrophilic. While the hydrophobic tail will be facing another hydrophobic tail ataupun inside of the plasma membrane. Jadi um, sel uh, sel uh, fosfolipid ini dia selain bergerak secara lateral side by side dia juga boleh bergerak secara flip flop maksudnya bertukar tempat atas dengan bawah but this is rare movement the most frequent movement is the lateral movement next um, cholesterol another dia macam accessory tak ada tak boleh uh, ada tak boleh banyak itu kolesterol eh. Sebab tu kita tak boleh tak ada kolesterol langsung. Okay. Jadi kolesterol ni apa fungsi dia? Kolesterol can be found in between the phospholipid. In between the phospholipid. The function is to regulate fluidity of membrane uh, influenced by temperature. Contohnya kalau ada banyak kolesterol terlalu banyak, sel membrane tu akan jadi rigid. Bila rigid dia akan jadi keras lah. Kan? So keras dia akan susah. Kalau sel darah putih kita jenis kalau kita yang perlu sel darah putih yang bergerak kalau dia ada banyak sangat kolesterol dia akan susah nak bergerak lah. Jam, krem. So it regulate fluidity of the membrane. Okay, influenced by temperature. Kita dah cerita tentang melting point semua tu kan. So kalau uh, banyak sangat saturated uh, uh, saturated fat uh, jadi akan jadi, dia akan jadi Keras. Itu sama je lah dengan kalau ada kolesterol. Kalau terlalu banyak, dia akan menyebabkan tinggi uh, rigidity, uh, the cell membrane rigidity increase. At warm temperature, it restrain the movement of, restrict the movement of phospholipid. Okay, dia punya fungsi kalau uh, suhu tinggi tak takut cair, takut nanti kan uh, phospholipid kita banyak sangat bergerak. Jadi terlalu fluid ataupun nanti kan terlepas. So dia akan restrain, restricts the movement. Kalau uh, cuaca sejuk, it will prevent tight packing. So it will maintain the fluidity. Eh? It will again prevent tight packing. Another, um, okay, the, uh, the component, the membrane protein, the component of, uh, the main component of the, the plasma membrane is protein. So, protein has a, uh, a diversified function in our plasma membrane. Pertama sebagai transport protein. Jadi, transport protein yang jadi channel, jadi carrier protein uh, ataupun sodium potassium pump. Itu semua ada pada plasma membrane lah protein yang ada pada plasma membrane. Kedua, as enzyme. Walaupun dia duduk pada plasma membrane, dia juga boleh jadi enzim. Enzim ni adalah katalis kan? Ha, jadi dia akan tukarkan substrate kepada produk. Because it has specific active site. Ketiga, involved in signal transduction. Ha, involved in signal transduction has specific binding site that fits with hormone. Sebab kita ni untuk pengetahuan awak, kita ada hormon. Hormon yang boleh masuk ke dalam sel dia uh, dia boleh terus masuk dalam sel saiz dia kecil tapi ada juga hormon yang saiz dia besar yang tak boleh nak masuk ke dalam sel jadi apa dia buat macam mana dia nak dan nak, nak berfungsi uh, jadi dia akan hantar maklumat uh, kepada kepada enzim pada plasma membrane tu dia kita panggil receptor eh receptor jadi Protein yang ada pada plasma membrane tu akan uh, hasilkan satu maklumat untuk sampaikan ke dalam sel. Sebab tadi hormon tadi tak boleh masuk. Kedua as intercellular joining. Jadi dia jadi pelekat antara satu sel dengan satu sel lain. Alright. Kelima, involved in cell recognition or identity marker. Ini penting kalau dalam sel um, badan kita contohnya antigen. 
antigen dengan antibody. Uh, sel darah merah dengan sel darah me, uh, sel darah merah kita eh, sorry darah kita darah A tak boleh bercampur dengan darah B. Macam mana nak tahu uh, by the presence of the uh, cell identity marker ni. Jadi itulah fungsi fungsi protein. Jadi glycoprotein ini dengan ada karbohidrat dengan protein ni dia dah hasilkan satu maklumat yang spesifik untuk sel itu. Jadi kalau sel ni contoh ni sel darah merah A ada antigen eh dia ada antigen di sini. Jadi kalau antibody kita jumpa sel darah uh, antibody antibody jumpa sel darah kita sendiri dia akan kenal lah. Uh, so this is what we call as identity marker. Tapi kalau tiba-tiba kita teri, or, uh, buat, buat apa ni pemindahan darah dan termasuk sel darah B. So dia dah lain. Antigen kat sini dah lain. Jadi dah jadi difference. Uh, so dia akan tak kenal. They do not recognize it as uh, our own self ataupun our cell. Jadi dia akan reject ataupun dia akan buat mekanisme untuk menghapuskan sel tersebut. Okay. Uh, the next uh, function is to provide an attachment site for cytoskeleton and extracellular matrix. Itu sebab tadi gambar eh, kita tengok balik kepada gambar yang macam ni. Nampak tak? Ha, ni yang cytoskeleton extracellular matrix. Cytoskeleton ni. Eh. Jadi kalau tak ada protein ni, satu skeleton ni tak boleh nak nah dia akan tercabut dan hilang entah ke mana-mana. Jadi kalau tak ada satu skeleton ni contohnya kalau pipi kita collagen tak ada. Jadi um, nampak tu sebab muka boleh jadi kulit berkedut nah, tak cukup lah kan. Okey kalau tak ada nanti sambung bacaan awak untuk 2.3 dan 2.4. 